the Indianapolis Colts. No first round picks. Because you used your first round pick on Carson Wentz. I don't know if Debo's painted. Oh, here he is. Here he is. <laughs> Debo. I got I got nothing. <laughs> it's just it's just an, it's like a message popped up. It was like Eric is in the stream with audio. No, yeah, just good timing that I finally started listening to you guys. <laughs> okay. I thought I was like, oh boy. Here he comes. Um, yeah, anyway, no first round picks. But uh traps, when you look at this team, what what needs to, uh, by the way, C Mart actually uh, put this in the chat too. Josh. Josh is just getting started as a golfer. Traps is at the top of his game. <laughs> Brinson has lost it, but no way he's managed to stop him turning up yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. If, if it's any uh, consolation, I certainly play like I just got started. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm. Yeah, I certainly play like I've lost it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, Traps, when you look at the Colts, obviously going to be picking not in the first round, although they do have several uh, later picks thanks to trading Carson Wentz. Uh, what do you see as needs for this team, and, and how do you see them addressing them, particularly in day two? Yeah, now that they have Matt Ryan, I think they got to go wide receiver, that they've just done this patchwork veteran route the last three quarterbacks now. Phil Rivers, Will, your guy, was pretty successful. Got to the playoffs with him. We're close in that game against the Bills. Uh, two playoff ago that I, I think – Michael Pittman's good. I, I don't know if he's a legitimate number one. There are people out there on Twitter that absolutely love Michael Pittman and feel like he's going to be a superstar. Um, I, I don't think he's there yet. So whatever wide receivers were available, Jalen Tolbert um, from South Alabama, uh, bigger body type, down the field, great in contested catch situations. Uh, George Pickens from Georgia could be good value there because he's coming off that torn ACL last March. Um, I think that's probably the biggest need. And then on defense, you have stars up front in your front seven in Darius Leonard and DeForest Buckner. Quiddy Pay had a pretty good rookie season, not outstanding. I would like to see them get more uh, playmakers in their secondary. In their secondary, Kenny Moore uh, has been kind of this diamond in the rough, underrated cornerback. But at the safety position, the other cornerback spot, uh, maybe another edge rusher. I wouldn't hate them going receiver and then trying to add more playmakers in the secondary. Um, the division is weak, but I think at this point, the Colts certainly want to get back to the playoffs after that abomination in week, what, 18 against the Jaguars. But it's a team that if they're looking at this point, Chris Ballard in his fourth or fifth uh, season as GM, they have to have higher sights um, than just winning the kind of crappy AFC South. And to do that, they have to stop the pass and just become more dynamic uh, through the air. You have the quarterback now to do it. They need more weapons, though, outside of Michael Pittman. Yeah, I mean, they made a player swap for uh, Unique Ngakwe for for Rocky Sin. So, I mean, they kind of created a bigger hole at the cornerback position. I yep. think that is a big need for them this offseason. So, when you're talking about day two possible fits, um, I'm looking at Sam Houston State's Sam Houston State's Zion McCollum is is a possible option. He's an incredibly long cornerback. Uh, and some teams may not even draft him based on that alone. I mean, there's certain guardrails where if you're going to be above a certain height, you're probably not going to be able to sink your hips and get you know into transition across the field that that uh, teams need you to do. So maybe it's going to be a team spe or a zone specific team that would be more interested in a Zion McCollum. Uh, and then I also look at Auburn's Roger McCreary, uh, who we've had on the Pick Six podcast before. I mean, he's just a very savvy the pod. Friend of the pod, Roger McCreary. He's just a very savvy prospect, a guy that gets it done uh, at the game's highest level. I mean, he's played in the SEC. He's been challenged, and he's overcome. I mean, he's he's just a very gifted player. Uh, you can knock him for his arm length if you want to, but you can't knock the production. I mean, he's he's a guy that comes out on top every matchup he's going against. Yeah. Uh, look, the again, like the Colts are – the Colts are – this division is fascinating as much as it is like stupid, just because the Colts have are on their like fifth straight, you know, one year quarterback, and like maybe Matt Ryan is a bridge to finding somebody else. But then you also have the issue of like if this team doesn't make the playoffs or isn't competitive or gags with the Jaguars in Week 18 again, Jim Irsay might just go nuts and fire everybody. Like yeah. he feels like it's this is such an important year. And Matt Ryan was such an important acquisition. Even if you don't like Matt Ryan or think that he'll be good this year, 
Like just the optics of getting a stable quarterback in to replace Carson Wentz w- was massive for this team. And so the, you know, the draft, I think Chris Ballard has been really good about getting day two picks. And I actually am a Pittman fan, but I agree with the traps. I, th- I think they need to, to upgrade that wide receiver core and give Matt Ryan some weapons uh, in order to be as successful as they possibly can. 